question. Uh, so do you require um, the students, uh, maybe a team members in the breakout room to record the breakout room? No, we don't. We don't. It could be done, but I don't feel like, uh, first of all, I will never have time to watch it, honestly. <laughs> and I circulate on all the time. I mean, I circulate. It could be very useful, probably, for languages where we record them and then we give them feedback on what they said and etc. But honestly, with how much online instruction is and how much time we spend giving feedback uh, every single day, I uh, I would not do it. I was I was just thinking that might because they're being recorded, maybe that kind of prompt them to be more on the task and try to speak in the target language, not maybe. necessarily me. Yeah. Maybe, but as soon as they realize that I don't give them feedback on it, they will stop. Okay. <laughs> so it might work once, unless I really give them feedback every single time. And then that makes sense. But that means watching my class three or four times after, after the end of each class, right? Which is a lot to expect from a teacher. We could do randomize it. It's a great idea from time to time. Ask them, all right, today we are going to record your, you are going to record yourself and I will give you a feedback. But realistically, we're not going to do it. You can tell them and then not do that. But then after one no time, feedback. they will know that you don't do it, right? So they will not, they will not care anymore. So that's the problem. All right, what other things in the lesson planning and, 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 and group work that came out? Or anybody else who might have any questions about it? Francesco, the calendar thing is a nice idea. Yes. Oh. That you were talking about with the. Okay. Um, yeah. Basically, what I did, I can show you quickly. I mean, this is very, very small thing, honestly. Uh, but it made my life easier, especially when I transitioned to an, uh, you know, from a traditional setting to an online course. So instead of rewriting the syllabus, uh, you know, as a, as a word document or in other ways. I just told the students, just look on Canvas, and I put everything on Canvas, including the learning goals. So this is what I did. Uh, for every class, I created um, an event mm -hmm. with the learning goals, and uh, I also uploaded the PDF, uh, sorry, the PowerPoint here. And also these things, you know, you can edit them uh, quite uh, uh, quickly. You can just drag them and move them uh, if you want. So instead of like having a table on Word that I had to sort of, you know, fiddle with, and that was just a, a much easier for me to um, to organize. Uh, I don't think it, it makes a difference in terms of substance, but it made my life easier, uh, perhaps also the students. I don't know, Shayar, what do you think? If I wanted to say that's a great idea because that makes things easier for us. We know exactly what uh, what we are going to do on that day, and the powerpoints are there, and just finger. To, I think that's a great idea if you could create that. That's one. Yeah. yeah, I think it's easier in general, you know, they have to look at one thing. So no emails, no PDF, no syllabus, no whatever calendar on Canvas and that's it. If you have Canvas. And I also want to note that we do have learning goals for each single class. Mm -hmm. Already in the syllabus, yeah. which yeah. Uh, yeah. has changed the game for us because before that we didn't. We just had strutture. Uno a uno, uno a punto uno. So what the students were thinking when coming to class is that we are going to teach them grammar. But our goal was not to teach them grammar because they have like grammar lectures already ready online. Our goal was to make them speak using that grammar or that vocabulary, vocabulary that they prefer. And adding the learning goals to each single class gave not only the graduate students the ability to know where they have to get at the end of the class, right? But it also, it also allowed the graduate students, the instructors, to think in, in terms of learning goals and functional language and not grammar and vocabulary. So that changed the game a lot for us. So we have learning goals for each level, for each lesson. And then we have assessment and paired learning goals with the assessment, uh, which I, because students don't understand very often, especially in online environment, what they are practicing with what assessment. And they say, we never did listening. Well, look at that table and you will see 
where you practice listening, where you practice speaking, where you practice whatever else you practice. Um, so that also was a big game changer for us. And I, that's something that I think we put also in hybrid courses, we added to our regular courses and it works well. Any questions, anything else about the uh, lesson planning or anything to add? Somebody mentioned sending files earlier. So I was wondering how do you do that? If you're like in class, you would give handouts, for example, information gap tasks. Uh, how have been people, I have small classes, so it's really easy for me to send them an email before class that they can either have open or another device. I can't expect them to necessarily yeah, be able to so we, print, uh, but um, any other ideas? I was yeah, so we, we talked about sharing the you know, advance. Uh, so what I do is putting them in the uh, you know, event, class event on Canvas so that uh -huh. they can find them. I used to uh, use emails, but I observed that emails you know, get lost. Uh, they receive so many emails, so uh, you just have like, you know, a specific place where you just upload the material for every class and the students look there every time uh, and they find it. Um, I don't think you can share, uh, oh, now you can. Now when I, when I click on chat on Zoom, uh, I see an option to share a file. That was not the case a few weeks ago, I think. Oh, um, no, it wasn't, no. Right. <laughs> so uh, before that, you know, it fun. was even more important to uh, mm -hmm. share it. Of course, you can share your screen, although not in the breakout rooms. So that's another aspect to consider when you do group work. Uh, especially important to share the material in advance. Um, and also, I use a lot of the whiteboard mm -hmm. uh, where you can uh, type sort of extemporarily or, uh, you know, mm -hmm. live whatever you want and uh, use it as a, as a real whiteboard, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that online courses are about excuses <laughs> or eliminating excuses. More excuses we eliminate, uh, more winning we are <laughs> you know what i'm saying so like if you say emails are lost and i found this way to make sure that students don't find a lost email as an excuse mm -hmm. right um, i also have yeah. been um, changing my classes to remove handouts basically so i include all of the information that would be on a paper handout in my slides um so so that I don't have to share more than one file with them. And uh, next to the whiteboard, another option is to, you can annotate on your share screen. Um, for example, uh, if I do this, uh, you're going to you'll see my 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 PowerPoint now, and I can start writing uh, on the on here, and you all see it. Uh, so I can add information here. Participants can annotate as well. Uh, if you want them to report uh, on what they did on the fictional, on the, on the non-existent uh, handout. Um, Sorry, how do they annotate? Um, so you go, if somebody else wants, if the Zoom team wants to yeah. enter. Sorry. <laughs> I don't see anyone. What is the online. option to annotate though? Oh, come on. How do I stop share? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> when, you, when you share your screen, then you have view options and there's annotate next to the green uh -huh. bar. I'm sorry, I, 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 the, we are the experts, but you see there are always issues. Uh, if you want to keep chatting, I cannot see my, my mouse anymore, so I will so work. I have it, I have it, Viola. So it's, you see, you, can you see me, what I'm doing? I'm yeah. on view, view options and then annotate. I cannot. Yeah, you we can. cannot. We cannot see that. Oh yeah, I see. I see. Drawing, though. I know, I know what it is. Yes. Yes. Sir. Can you see me drawing? Yeah. So that was yes. me drawing on Viola's PowerPoint. Ah, perfect. I can also clear it if uh, my drawings. So I just so, cleared my. Uh, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see if Paul, well, you can see it, but on top, uh, it appears uh, a green bar with uh, you're viewing Viola Dennis screen. View option annotate. That's where you can annotate. I ah. think it disappears when somebody is using it. It might be, yes. Yep. It might be. When someone else is using it, it disappears and it comes back when it's free to use. Well, you see, we're learning new things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the point of this meeting, to learn. Yay. Um, All right. I, I would I, like to stop, stop sharing. Should I sharing? I, I, I can okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> nice job. All right. So, any other comments to the lesson planning or group work? Actually, I, I wanted to add a, a couple things. 
Mm -hmm. uh, since we were talking, so um, I, I've never I've never thought about uh, Francesco's way of of doing um, of sending students like the lesson plan for the day. Uh, what we did for our courses, and Carolina can of course talk more about it with Canvas at least. With Canvas, we often use modules. Uh, so instead of having a paper, um, a, a paper, a paper uh, syllabus, we just use modules. And with modules, you can um, add links. You can create pages with all the links that you would with the with the explanation of the day with the links. Uh, you can have quizzes. So modules is very flexible uh, if you have Canvas. Again, not so, all of us have Canvas, so I'm not. I'm, maybe it's not the time to start talking about Canvas, but uh, this is an option too. Well, I'm assuming that everybody though has some kind of a some kind of a learning um, management course management system. Uh, I will actually show you if I find the M250 very quickly because yeah. that's the, that's the course that we created um, together the materials just keep talking about something else and in the meantime i will find it I yes think we i would like to oh sorry emma no no go ahead no um we i would like to add something that we discussed about whiteboards uh and actually i would like Zhao Jing to uh say uh, what you were saying about uh so we had the problem that some people need to write in a different way uh, than, than Western. So uh, what are the options, Zhao Jing, for people that have a different script? Yeah, so um, if you have a touchpad laptop or a PC, you can actually just writing because when you are typing, um, then uh, Shire said he couldn't write a type from right to left, but you can just use your hand to to write a touch screen and if you don't have a touch screen um we recently purchased two writing pads that can be connected to your computer and or bluetooth to connect it to your computer then you can use those because using mouse to write is very hard like when we teach um chinese character or japanese characters so with the writing pad it actually allows you to do pretty cool drawing so if you want to test with using um the writing pad um uh, we recently just purchased two but because we would we don't know the need for it, but if, there is, if there's more need, you can just contact us, like the Center for Language Technology. I, I would type, uh, I'll include a link on how you can contact us to, to get that writing pad. Okay. Yes. So I found the course I wanted yeah. to share with you just for a quick second to show you how the course can be organized online, because I think the organization of the course is the, is the key. I have to say that we redid this course three or four times, and only with the help of a really, really strong uh, instructional designer that we managed to, s that I think this course works. Leonardo, does this course work, does this course work now? So you are teaching it? Hello, Leo? Yes, I am, again? sorry, I... Does it work, you think, in your... Oh yeah, absolutely, it does. All right, so this is so this is how they set it set it up for me. We gave them all the content and they set it up. So this is the first uh, set the first uh, page with my beautiful picture because I was supposed to teach the course. Then you click on getting started and you have all the requirements, all the information, uh, etiquette, introductory video with the quiz based on the introductory video. So once you organize your online course. If it happens that you have to be online next fall, I would really invite everybody to actually create a video with introduction to the course and then uh, a quiz on how to move around the course within the course environment. And uh, so this is the quiz. And then by moving next, they had each week was organized basically the same. So you have the introduction, learning objectives, online materials, vocabulary, grammar, and then you have virtual classroom with the uh, information what they are going to learn in the virtual classroom. So this is how the uh, weeks were organized and they would move uh, through the modules. We used Quizlet for the, uh, for
for the um, vocabulary. Then they had access to grammar lectures. Karina, and, show, uh, show them the actual modules. If they yeah, can yeah, the exactly. Modules. Okay. If modules, you get the modules, yes. because it's like the syllables, the the, the um, you know, is that well, these yeah. So this is this is basically organized by by week, and our classes. Uh, our week is not um, Sunday through Monday. Uh, fr no, wait, no, Sunday no, through no. Saturday. It is uh, when the class meets. Class meets once a week, and they meet on what day do they meet on? Uh, on Thursday. On Thursday. So our week goes from Thursday to Wednesday, because mm -hmm. all the materials are due on Wednesday evening. So that yeah, is but our, our there week. is a breakout of the. I mean. We have a breakout here uh, that says, I mean, when is best to do this kind of work? Then they can, I mean, they can do whenever, uh, they, they can do the homework whenever they want before the due date, but we give them advice on uh, when they should. We don't uh, have it here anymore. We just have introduction. Yes, but it's like very, very, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, they know they shouldn't be doing everything at mm -hmm. the last minute. Anyway, so that extreme i think if you if you organize your materials you have to be first of all extremely uh streamlined and always remember about numbering numbering drives people nuts once you decide on certain numbering just write it down somewhere and keep it going because i had to switch i think 15 times between these different numberings of sections because you create you create you create more activities and then you get lost so, I mean, the organization of the online course is, is extremely important. Anyway, I'm sorry. Let's go to uh, assessment and learning goals. Yes. Um, anybody of you wants to, uh, of, my, of our group, wants to share what, what we said or? I can, can, I, can I choose? You can choose. Can I choose Tiziana or Katie? <laughs> Tiziana knew it was good. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm okay with that. I knew that, Carolina. But anyway, um, uh, we talked about, um, especially, we talked about, especially we talked about assessment and uh, especially our challenges. And uh, one of the main challenges, one of the main challenge was authentic work. So plagiarism, how to prevent students from plagiarizing or copying while they're taking an exam online. Uh, we also talked about uh, the challenge posed by internet connections. Some students um, do not have good internet connections and they may not be able to take an assessment. Um, and also just students being in different uh, time zones as well. Uh, when are they going to take the assessment? I personally have a lot of problems now in my class. Not a lot of problems, but, you know, some, some issues with that right now in my class. Um, and I, what I found interesting was this idea of um, really turning the final exam, and, and this is quite timely because it's toward the end of the semester, um, turning the uh, written exam into an oral exam, um, especially considering that the type of oral speech that the students can be um, exposed to and that they can practice in class is very limited uh, in an online class. Um, maybe because you have a lot of students and because of the technicalities of the breaker rooms and the times and all of that and also because someone can hide behind you know a screen um, and so uh, we talked a little bit about this oral interview um, that Indiana University does with their students and also about um, also if, you, if we want to keep the written the final written exam which exercises would um, lend themselves better to that kind of environment so that uh, students uh, are kind of prevented from, from uh, uh, you know, looking up words or using Google and all of that. And so um, what I found really, really interesting in this second part, the written exam uh, used online, is that it really they should, it, uh, pa pa I I'm sorry, I can't remember both of you. Yeah. They used, yes, Patlea and um, 
uh, remind me about, about your name. Leonardo. Yeah. Oh. Grazie. Uh, they used, um, they didn't use specific questions, you know, the, the fill in the blanks or the multiple choice. But they chose the small essay answers where the students have to be more creative. And they chose uh, the small composition, the essay questions with restrictions, which I also found interesting. Meaning, what I mean by restrictions is that they say, well, you have to use, I don't know, a three imperatives or three futures. And while this may look kind of labored, right? Because then the, the writing is not really, cannot really flow very well. But at the same time, it forces students to keep within a certain uh, path and so I think it makes it harder to, to uh, you know, turn in a work that is not original. And so everything that's got to do with creativity is being uh, brought forward into these exams. Another ex very useful exercise is to read something and summarize. And I found that really, really interesting because they have to understand reading and they have to understand how to summarize it so it's 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 more difficult it adds you know a layer of difficulty that makes it more difficult i think to uh to copy from from another source um and yeah and especially you know anything that's creative and that requires a, a um uh, a small essay uh, answer. I think it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, I don't know. You know, one beautiful thing about you know multiple choice and uh, pictures that they have to match is that then the computer grades it automatically, right? If we have a lot of all of the SV questions, then we have to go into all of them and correct them into all of them and. I mean, if we have smaller classes like we do, then it's quite possible. But I can imagine, you know, 20 classes, uh, like a section with an exam with six or seven of those corrections for every exam. So it makes it kind of, uh, it could make it kind of hard. So this is what we talked about. So to, I think to a just give a little bit of frame, in our online courses, we, have, we don't have written a final exam. We have only oral final exam, which is a one-on-one -on -one interview with the instructor that lasts more or less 20 minutes. It's an OPI style interview. Uh, this semester, we kind of, you know, we found ourselves in a situation when we had to keep, um, when we had to keep, keep the uh, written exam because it, it was already within the course structure. We didn't want to stress students out with a one-on-one interview that would last 20 minutes, et cetera, et cetera. So we decided we'd still have an interview at the end for our regular students, but it is uh, in, in Paris and it's a little shorter. So that's our oral exam. So we were thinking we can't ask the students to get proctored exam because it costs money usually. We can ask them to uh, block their screen, right, to lock their screen, etc. But it's still, even examinity or others, you know, it still just looks at certain things. And, and it's not there with the students. The person is not there with the students. So we had to find a way to avoid cheating. So we came up with this idea of four or five essay questions uh, that target certain, they're like OPR questions, just, just written, written, and two readings. Uh, so one is, has to be summarized and another one has to be finished or answered to in a certain way. We can do listening because Again, it would, it's, it's hard to do on, in online environment mm -hmm. on Zoom. We, we ask students to be on Zoom with us and we put them in separate breakout rooms where they have to share the screen with us and write in front of us. But still, all of this is still possible to cheat with all of this. So, this is, so we decided to just find the, the, the formula that would allow them to cheat less. Mm -hmm. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. um, because I was I was thinking about it, and for the cheating things, um, we don't have to forget that it's even with essay questions, it's very easy for students to go on reverse. So um, they do it. They do it even in class. Last time I taught with you, Carolina, there was one of the student that was literally translating while she was speaking. Um, and I know it because she translated a, 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 per, a personal name in, in Italian, but whatever. Uh, so one thing that we, I don't know, I found myself with someone we discussed, you know that when you share the screen, you can either share the desktop 
or you can share the simple, like the Word document. Something that we can make sure is that our students share the actual desktop, uh, because if they only share their, um, their Word, they can just go out and, and go on Google and we will still see um, so I'm not exactly sure how that works, but sharing the desktop to me seems uh, maybe a better idea so that at least they have this kind of like fear that we go in the, in the breakout room and we see that they are on Google or they're not on, on board. But the other thing, well, they can still use phone, right? The other yes. thing, I mean, the other thing that you can do is if we put those essay questions within Canvas quiz, we can log their screen. Uh, there is an option within Canvas to lock the screen. I don't know, honestly, they still can have another computer sitting by, that, by their side, they can have a phone. I think, we, I think what we have to do is to time it. We have to think about timing. In theory, they have two hours. We will think about timing of each of these questions. And just if we see any traces of cheating, we will have to report it. But that's, I mean, that's where we are and that's how we are trying to deal with it right now. But if it was on me and if we could move online, like if I had known that we were moving online, I would just do an oral exam, just as we do for the online courses. And if I may say something about the oral, also what I find interesting is that um, they provide, you provide, questions at the beginning of the semester so that uh, students can, you know, start working on whatever uh, the, the oral qu questions may be. And then in the final oral, um, the, the questions that the teacher, I think in, in the one-on-one -on -one teacher student interview, uh, the, the, the questions that will come up are related to the initial questions that they were shared. So they're not completely out of the blue, but they're not set. They don't, I th that if, if I understood correctly, the students don't know exactly what they're going to be talking about, but they've been prepared because they have this list of questions that they've been preparing throughout the semester. So I, I, I found this very fair and also uh, with a little bit of unpredictability that, that would make an oral uh, exam a little bit more authentic. Yes, yeah, so we, we have a list, like a point of departure, right? For, but we don't know where this is going to take us, pretty much. Uh, so they have the base and that, that base of the questions is a part of our everyday teaching. At least for me, I always start my class before the class starts, 15 minutes I am there and my students know about it and they actually come earlier. And I pose those questions, those discussion questions, like five or six uh, on, the, on the board, either in my regular course or online, doesn't matter. So they can start already practicing speaking and using those questions from the, the possible questions from the oral interview because, before even class starts. And then we go to the, to the actual class. So they are always part of our daily routine, at least for me. And that's what I always try and to encourage everybody to do. Okay, other things, other worries or other questions? Grazie, Tiziana. No? No worries about assessment, learning goals, nothing. You think you will all reach your learning goals with a week that we lost and uh, being online? You are confident about that this semester? Alessia? Um, maybe I can ask Katie uh, if she feels like talking about what she created for her third semester classes. I think it actually revolutionized uh, the way we teach intermediate at Notre Dame. Certainly, it has changed completely the way I teach my four semester courses. So, um, Katie? A couple of years ago, I just got tired of doing a written final exam on material I had already tested. So, I started doing e portfolios that the students put together for their final assessment. So, it's um, a website entirely in Italian with multiple. Um, videos of them speaking from like their midterm oral project and a final oral uh, video, which is a welcome to their page. There's the cultural assignments they've done throughout the whole semester. And the whole website is curated by them. So there's always captions introducing what they did for the assignment. The learning goals from the semester have their own page and they 
write a paragraph reflection about how they feel that they've worked towards or met that learning goal. And they provide uh, some sort of assignment from the semester that demonstrates that. And um, students have really taken to this assignment. It's much more enjoyable to me than grading 500 pages of, of exams at the end of the semester. And um, I've had students put, you know, it's one thing to say on your resume, you have an intermediate level of Italian, and it's another thing to provide a link to a website showing that level of Italian. And so I've had students come back and say that it's gotten them summer internships and you know, jobs, and it's been things commented on during job interviews. So I think it's been a positive. And then Alessia continues it in the fourth semester. And so it makes the, my life a lot easier because they already know what they're doing from the third semester. And I just sent Katie today uh, one of the final written, written um, uh, compositions they did for the fourth semester. It's, it's beautiful to see the growth, uh, the, the, reflect, the, the reflectivity part of the uh, learning goals. Um, it really has changed everything for us. And it's a much more organic, spont not spontaneous, but natural way of uh, assessing the learning goals. Um, and you are not required to have a final exam, are you? Yes, we are, uh, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> We choose okay, okay. Well, <laughs> because no, I mean, we, we kind of got it for the online courses, but it's much harder for us to get it for the other uh, regular levels to not have to do the final written, especially the written exam is the part that is... They write a lot. You know, the C portfolio, if you count the number of words and the number of minutes they speak, it way exceeds what you would do in a, any... I know, but I was even lowering the amount of points that the final exam would be worth at the end. Yeah. And then I was asked to bring it up to the oh, certain to the certain percentage. Uh, sure, sure. So it I mean those are things to consider. I think it's a great project. And and for for sure we could do that, for example, in our program at three hundred level. That would be something where we where we are not expected to do exam, right? That could be that could be something really interesting to do at the three hundred mm -hmm. level. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing it. I appreciate mm -hmm. learning, learning, learning. Then I will contact you, Katie, to ask uh, what website you're using. Right. Exactly. I will send you an email tomorrow. <laughs> sure. No problem. Google Sites, Carolina. Just go Google, Google Sites. Sites. Google Sites. All right, so let's go. Of course, if somebody has to go, please feel free to go. It's been already an hour and a half, and I understand if you have other plans. If you want to keep talking, let's keep talking, um, because I have nothing else to do right now, apart from eating dinner. So student engagement and personalization. And I think, uh, I think there's been a lot in that group that was Ciao Francesco and Colleen Ciao, she left too, uh, that was all said. Emma and... Uh, Massimo was in that group. Who else was in that group? Uh, Viola and Kenna and Lucia and Nicolo also. All right. Um, I, I guess I can say something. I don't think I can remember everything we talked about. So when I forget something, inevitably, you guys can chime mm -hmm. in. But um, one thing that we really talked about was how to transform our idea of student engagement from in-person to online. And we had a lot of ideas for that for our language courses, especially with making everything more visual and making sure to lower the effective filter for our students. But one of our main concerns, especially talking with Professor Scalabrini, was how to manage the amount of work that students would have to increase their engagement and still remaining fair. Because Laura Dempsey was also in our group and she noticed how to create an environment that keeps student engage, students engaged in the classroom creates more work for them. Um, so by having them write more, having them watch additional lectures and participate in more discussions. And so that was one of our main concerns in how to, you know, balance having an engaged class and a burnt out class, I guess. Yeah, we mentioned basically a double-edged sword because in order to have them more engaged and think more about the class, both in French and Italian, we have them do video, video diaries at home. So they record themselves while they 
recount either what they did or something about the class, but that obviously requires them to dedicate more time to it and us to grade them and spend time on those videos. Um, but that was part of the engagement uh, uh, we discussed. But as Emma said, we spent the latter part of the breakout room discussing with Professor Scalabrini how to make his class the best uh, online. Um, that's the biggest challenge, it seems, to have big classes because we mentioned the breakout rooms, how you can, you know, divide and they can be just two people per room, but if, what do you do if you have 80 students, 100 students? And time. I think that one of the things that really helped me to keep my students engaged that we're doing now at Indiana was to separate my students into two sections um, in which I added 10 minutes on both ends and to teach the same class two times. So they're in class less time, but they have more direct, direct engagement with each other and with me. And I'm teaching a little bit more, but at the end of the day, it helps me make sure that I'm addressing all of their needs and it's a lot less stressful. So it's like a little bit, it replicates our traditional online setting of having eight students in the morning and eight students in the evening and teaching the same course. So I don't know um, if at Notre Dame that something like this has been similar to keep the class size small enough to be on Zoom. But I think that, at least for me, that's been really useful. Um, and I think another thing that's been useful at Indiana was our, um, Outside of the core student engagement, Laura mentioned all of the activities that French, the French side was doing, the Italians were doing a lot of like social media engagement, the karaoke competition. So keeping, and we do a twice weekly conversation hour, um, which Lucia brought up how that kind of shows the holes in not having a structured lesson because it's more of a freewheeling conversation. So it shows that students get more shy um, anyway, so that was a little rambling, but we had a lot of considerations in our uh, in our breakout room. Alessia, do you divide your students? You don't, right? You do. We focus. gave uh, we gave instructors a choice. Uh, mm -hmm. I personally do. I divide them into groups uh, because I have big classes, um, so I do 25, 30 minutes each group instead of uh, altogether 50 minutes. And because we already mentioned, because we don't have to move physically from one classroom to or build into another, we can use those minutes to, to be in class. Uh, but I saw, you know, I visited classes the other day for the graduate students that were teaching to promote the courses for next semester. And I saw all of it. I saw some people doing uh, 15 students together and just being super happy and smiley and others choosing to do smaller groups. So. I guess it depends on the on the instructor's choice. I think, yeah, I think in general, like if you have a group, small, small, good small group that gets along, it's great. If you have a small group that does not want to work together, it becomes a nightmare. Because if you have a bigger group, you always find somebody, you know, to rely on. I can rely on Tiziana or Alessia, right? <laughs> but like if I had only three people, then I might not have, you know, anybody that would be willingly uh, speaking to me. So I think, you know, it, it can it can go both ways. Uh, but having eight, eight, between six and eight students in a in a in an online environment is really is really maximum. I also think that it's the, the personalization goes, the engagement goes with personalization. If we manage to personalize our courses and give them a human aspect of who we are, so we introduce ourselves through a video and the students get to know us before the course starts. Uh, we give them some, you know, the first class, my students really, thought I was there. My students really relaxed at the end when I started showing them cats and dogs. This was the moment, you know, it might not be professional, but this is something that the students need. This is that, that human, human thing that we, we are lacking in online environment. So like turning my video and showing them my cat or bringing my cat and they're like, oh, look at mine, oh, and look at mine. And then all of a sudden it go, they all relaxed uh, online, for me at least. So, Making it about their everyday life in the courses, I think is in the online courses, making them show in the language courses is easier than in the literature courses, right? Uh, but making them show 
uh, I don't know, their, their closet when they're talking about mm, clothing or um, their family if they want to share, right? Or their friends or whatever they have outside of the window, et cetera, et cetera, makes it more personalized. For me, in my literature course, it's literary giving my students 10 minutes at the beginning of each class to talk about something positive. And it's like, what made you laugh last time? Literary, in Italian we talk, five minutes. What made you laugh la last week? Uh, what, what, what is a good, one good thing that happened to you in the, in the last week? These things, you know, make them, make them feel human and make them feel seen as human <clears throat> beings and not separated from you. And then it translates in the course more assignments that are personalized within the course and more interactions you can create between the students, more engagement you will see in class. So that's, sorry. And yeah, no, that's exactly what we did. Sorry, yeah. go on. Actually, I have a question that this is something that I've been using in my course and I don't know if it's beneficial or not, but I try and include in like our chat session in the beginning questions about, you know, pertaining to current events as well, thinking about quarantine, thinking about COVID-19. And I was actually, I, I find it useful to let the students know that I care about them on a human level. Um, and I do, I know that we're going through something crazy together. On the other hand, one of the big questions that I would have and be interested in hearing would be, you know, is, are we, should we be providing a distraction and ignoring what's going on or should we be thinking about these things together I don't know it's it's I think it's it's hard to balance both so it, and to the end of personalization almost and personalizing the course to you and to your students into this moment I guess I think this moment is so absurd that pretending that it doesn't exist is almost I mean we are all in the same situation stuck at home not willingly and I, I, I don't think I don't think there's anything wrong. Shayar, you wanted to say something? Yeah, well, actually, I do that in every session. I think that's important to assure the students that this is normal. What's happening? We're going to overcome this problem. So I ask them, "How are you doing? How's the family?" Please, I advise them to pay attention to the social distancing, and they like it. I think they realize that you know we are all human beings. We go through the same thing. I think that has been very positive. I don't see anything wrong with that to sort of uh, bring it in the real life into the picture. We always, as, as teachers, language teachers, we always bring real life into the picture. I mean, what we are talking about in our classes are their everyday experiences, right? So, I mean, bringing this is part of our job, really. I, that's how I see it. I mean, with online instruction, what I find really extremely important is to send my students regular emails asking about their well-being, asking about their well-being, asking about what they need from me. The students will avoid office hours online for some reason, at least our Indiana University students. Uh, I send them all personalized email after we switched online asking them are you safe are you feeling okay is there anything i can do i received answered every student answered because that's what they needed to hear they just needed to hear that somebody cares and in our online courses honestly how uh, how we do it i always underline that we lose students more easily online than in face to face because students are disengaged because they are absent right? They, they don't see our face. Before even they go to class once, mm -hmm. they drop the class, right? And we, that, we see that in, at IU. And we, we send them hundreds of emails at the beginning of the semester asking them, are you there? Is there anything I can do? How can I help you? Let's meet for the first two weeks. If not, we, we lose a lot of students if we don't do that. So that also is personalizing and, and trying to engage the students, at least in a dialogue with me initially at the beginning of the course. You might guys not have it at, at Notre Dame at all, this problem. 
but we do. We don't because we don't have online classes during a regular semester. It's easy enough. <laughs> yeah, but you have during the summer, right? So that we I do, mean. but the summer is short enough that they they actually come to class and they finish. Plus, it's a different type of student, I guess, uh, and the cost in itself uh, makes them come to class. <laughs> It's an investment every credit hour in Notre Dame. Well, but <laughs> they can drop until a certain moment of the semester without getting charged, right? Yeah, so. but it's very rare that we drop, we have students drop, even in Italian, in other languages, very few drop uh, once they've started. They, if oh, they drop, have, it's the couple, the first couple weeks. We have a lot that don't even show up. The instructors never see them. They, they enroll in the course and they then don't, don't even show up once. Yeah. Anyway, anything else? Actually, I will just share with you the bingo project. I don't know if you've seen, Alessia might have been familiar. We created a bingo at the very beginning when it all happened, uh, where the students had to do certain uh, activities connected to Italian. That's talking about personalization and arrangement. This Actually, I'm thinking about this for online courses as a regular activity uh, for classes. Uh, within the classes uh, uh, because I think it might be really interesting for the students and they had to I don't know saying happy birthday uh, while washing their hands in Italian or uh, sing a song under the shower two songs and then tell us which one is better to sing Italian song of course things like that I record and their animals introduce their animals or teach somebody two sentences in Italian and record it and post it it was supposed to, it was meant to be both engagement and also, uh, Sarah is sharing the bingo. It's supposed, it was supposed to be engagement, but also hopefully a course promotion. And there was also karaoke involved of that. I'm still blaming Katie for that. So we, that's my son saying two sentences in Italian that I posted. And students have been really posting. Some of them got really into it. Uh, so yeah, and that was me again. But there was a lot of students that, that have been posted. It was nice to see. So we managed to engage them uh, into at least this this part. So so I think organizing things like that for online courses is really beneficial for them to just engage them with the program and with what we do. And as Emma mentioned, we have a twice a week. Somebody mentioned we have the conversation hour twice a week. Uh, which is hosted by by Emma, so just an AI, and they can come, they can join in. And we remind them that anybody, any level can join. And even when we are in person, not everybody has to speak, but you can just say, sit there, you listen. Uh, we usually talk about food and films. Um, I know at Notre Dame you guys kept the, the circoli, right? I mean, the coffee hour. You kept the coffee hour, right, online? Well, not exactly. We created some other uh, events. We had a Tiziana offered a cooking class, for example. Um, I did a conversation with my, my family in Italy. Uh, Patrick did um, karaoke and something else. Oh, the, they watched a movie and then talked about the movie. Uh, right now, actually, we have uh, our Leslie Marcantonio. Uh, she's doing a um, painting class with an artist from Chicago. It's now, right? I think it's. Uh, What's going on now? Uh, what else did we have? Uh, so we, we created a, a variety, a calendar, a variety of um, activities with our Zoom links and uh, students showed up pretty decently, actually. Yeah. We, oh, we also recorded the cooking. Yeah. <laughs> yes. My student told me that my video was really good content. <laughs> Viola, Viola taught them how to make coffee with a mocha which is kind of a necessary thing that the students should know. Exactly. So what others, uh, what others issues or, or, or questions or anything that you might have about uh, personalization and engagement? I see Vincenzo, I'm losing Vincenzo, so we will go to uh, technology now. I thought oh, Vincenzo, was, Vincenzo was looking like he was falling asleep. Uh, no, 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 I'm not falling asleep. I'm having an argument with my inter internet connection. So it's, I mean, it's more like a technical problem. But I'm here, I mean. So we are passing slowly to technology. So if you have um, any idea. Uh, in our group, Lucia mentioned distractions uh, that we have and they were already mentioned. And so in small classes, what we talked about is calling, 
students directly with their name, asking them to answer the question, asking them to read, or let them be for a second, but then they are going to be part of the next activity, basically as soon as possible. And so the smallest classes, the better. Um, something that we didn't say, but I'm going to say here is that we give them an etiquette. How to be online, which is that we tell them it's the same thing as being in an office. They have to sit down. They don't have to be in their bed. Uh, they have to be dressed. Uh, we, we suggest headphones. So we, we are very, very clear in our expectations for what, what it means to be in front of the computer. And uh, in one of my courses, we noticed that some students were not doing that throughout. So we just reminded them. Uh, maybe they were getting tired. And so we said, this is how we, we, are, we are going to be online. We are going to be all wake, woken up with a cup of coffee. We made a joke about how we need coffee as instructors. Um, so that helped too, I think. And yet I had, uh, Pantalea had a student that was in a blanket. Uh, oh yeah, that's the student. Wrapped up in a blanket. <laughs> I had a student that was going like that. She was disappearing <laughs> and disappearing and disappearing. And then I saw only this and I'm like, Natalia. Per favore, <laughs> con la schiena. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I, I really, it's, it's hard, but you have to call on them all the time. Like I thought Vincenzo was falling asleep. I called on him. That was my, that was my instinct. Um, that's what I do. I <laughs> just end up very direct. I just say, hey, non dormire, right? I mean, don't sleep. But yes, it is a problem. Distractions there also for me. Uh, my dog started barking I, in, in, during this meeting. I had to open the door, mute my microphone, open the door, yell at my husband to take my son and my dog for a walk. I mean, this, you know, this is part of where we are right now. I think it's beneficial if something happens to the instructor to say, I apologize, something's going on, I need to... Even yeah. with, the, with Zoom bombing, if it happens, I think it's helpful to say, excuse me, class, let me take care of this. And okay, and then we can resume. Otherwise, I think it makes no sense anything to hide what's happening behind. I honestly think that you can see immediately, even when somebody looks at the phone, I've seen many, many of you looking at your phones. I, of course, I don't call it because we are not here to like as a student, right? But you can see when somebody's looking on, on their phone. I mean, you can see when somebody gets distracted. I think we are humans. And saying that to the students make the course more personal, honestly. I mean, being, being a human in this situation is what makes you a person. My dog barking is what makes me a person. And me saying, I'm sorry, il mio cane. Me dispiace. It's just part of, of who I am and where I am. And I don't have a soundproof office. I'm sitting <laughs> on the floor with a with a with a, a wall behind me because that's the only place that looks semi-professional in my home. And my computer is not strong enough to do virtual background. Here we are. I mean, this is this is how it lands, how, how it goes. Anyway, all right, technology. Um, for technology, I would just like to, we discussed many things, but I, since it's getting late, I would just like to uh, address one thing that I know we also discussed it many times in, uh, as, as a group, and that's the question of meetings. Should we use our personal meetings? Should we create a new meetings? Uh, so what we talked about, and, and Colleen told us what she um, did in her, in her class, and um, Xiaojing to uh, give us some ideas, something that we can do uh, to avoid using our personal meetings for many reasons, for all the reasons that we want, and specifically because we want to keep that as a sort of private or use it just for consultation or for other things. Something that is very easy to do is just going on Zoom settings and schedule a new meeting. Uh, when you schedule a new meeting, um, you decide you, you schedule it. So uh, you reserve a specific, um, generally automa generate automatically. So um, it's uh, just a new ID and you can decide 
when you do it, how many times a day, you can decide if you need a password or, or not, um, and you can decide if it recurs or not. It can recur weekly, for example, uh, and it can recur two days a week. Uh, this is with uh, fixed times, so you know that your students uh, can access it only during those specific times. Colleen told us, for example, that she, uh, she um, put the meetings with a 15 minutes span before or later so that if students want to be there before she is there and they want to chat, this is something that can happen. Uh, Zhao Jing was saying that you can also put no fixed times. So um, students will just, uh, will just go there whenever they want. Uh, and this is the, uh, the, the, the meeting ID that they will use throughout the whole semester. So the specific M150 class will have this and they can go there whenever they want. Um, and this is something that we discussed to avoid. Uh, maybe you have two classes back to back. And so you're finishing one class and some student might try to enter uh, in your new class. And of course you can change those using waiting lists, using other things, but this seemed something uh, worth noticing. Um, so again, this is something that happened. You don't have to create it all the times. So you just create it once at the beginning of, the, of your semester. Um, and you can, you can put whatever you, like all the settings that you want. So this is something that you, it's it, it's worth uh, considering at least. I've been so, using my personal Zoom meeting since 2014. This is the first time I created because I made it public, right? I sent it out. This is the first time I created another Zoom uh, link. I never had problems. However, now that there are Zoom bombers, I still don't have problems. Everybody has problems. I don't. I don't know, my number must be magic. There has to be magic in there. The waiting room works very well if you have Zoom bombers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do and have I, Zoom I mean, bombers I, and it works. Yeah, waiting room and yeah, waiting room is perfect for the Zoom bombers. I think that solves. And waiting room is also perfect for the students that come into the, while, while one course finishes and another starts, that's also something that can be used to hold the students. They can wait and then they enter once the other set of students finishes. So, or I mean, hours. you can choose whatever, whatever works for you. That's, that's the beauty of this. Yeah. Uh, I'm just too lazy, honestly, to create new meetings. I just always use the same. And then once I create a new meeting once, Leonardo goes to my old meeting. That's what I want to say. <laughs> Because he and Sarah went not, not to a true, regular not meeting. True. That's not true. <laughs> it is true, you did. Anyway, are there any other questions? Because I know it's late and I don't want to like, hold you all. Uh, quick, question, quick question about uh, Zoom bombing. Uh, if you create a password, I personally have not done it, but I've noticed that you have with this meeting. If you create a password, does that mean that Zoom bombers will have a harder time getting into your meeting? Do you know? It depends. If you have a student that wants your class to be interrupted, he will or she will send that password to the Zoom bomber and the Zoom bomber will get in. So, I mean, yeah. it, it's from what I hear, it's the student sending the meeting IDs and the passwords to the people that offer their services as Zoom bombers. I see. Mm -hmm. Business. Uh, hmm? I, it's a business. Um, it is a business. I think it's on TikTok. It's literally becoming a business. Yeah. Uh, really. I, I think the waiting room is easier also for the uh -huh. students because some students of my students had a hard time using the password. It became an issue of accessibility for them. So waiting room is on the instructor. The students don't have to change at all their behavior. Um, so I think it works like if I can add something, I mean, the only issue you can have with waiting room is that it could happen that, uh, I mean, the bombers just use like a student, uh, a student ID. And I mean, so yes, the, 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 yes. the, I mean, the password system is not totally useless. Uh, no, unless they send it, because no. how, how do they get the link? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, 
So if they can get to the link, they will get to the password probably as well. If somebody, but you have to share it. So for example, today I used password, but I'm like, well, I'm sending it to so many people, right? If somebody wants to share it with somebody, I'm risking. So I still kept the, the waiting room. Mm -hmm. Although I didn't know who was coming and I still let mm -hmm. in everybody. So it was kind of, uh, but. But um, Vincenzo, the exact problem that you pose is actually what happened to Viola, if I remember correctly. She had somebody who signed in with the exact name of one of her students. Mm -hmm. And how, what was your solution to that? Uh, well, at the beginning, I wouldn't uh, have, I wouldn't accept either people that have the same name. Uh, and then before accepting one of them, I warned the rest of the class. I said, there's a Zoom bomber. Please wear it. I apologize. I, th I thought it was important to apologize beforehand because I knew that some Zoom bombing have been, has been with racial slurs. So I accepted the first one. That was the Zoom bomber. I ex uh, immediately removed them. But from that moment on, I knew which was my student's um, actual name. And what he, was he saying? Pancakes? Well, sure. the, the last time he entered, uh, by mistake, just because I, 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 he, he said... Um, Okay, something um, else. Something else. Yeah, all right. I would but anyway, you, you, you can work around it. I don't think, uh, since you have the power, if, 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 even if they're in the room, you don't lose your temper, you just remove them. I think it's important to be clear with the students what's happening. Yeah, I would also add very quickly that when you have the waiting room, uh, it's important that you keep, I believe that you keep your... Um, participation, participant chat may be open uh, because it's very easy that someone is kicked out and then unless they have your email and unless you could keep checking your email, they might yeah. just be outside. Like Vincenzo was kicked out before and I was able to see it only because I, I saw him on, the, on, the, on WhatsApp. Uh, because if you have your screen open uh, and you but don't But I allowed him twice and he still didn't get into the right thing. I think because you are with me from, uh, so you were in the breakout room, uh, so that's the reason I could not get in. Yeah. Well, but I mean, I mean I yes, you have to be, you have to be careful because it happens that students lose yeah. connection and they need many to be times, re many times. Yes, they need to be. Oh, I had, I had a student this week that I mean, she skipped, she missed the whole class because of this, and I mean it, that was unfortunate. Yeah, it's all yeah. Well, I mean it, it, it happens. Yeah. All right. And the other, it's been two hours. I mean, really, it's, I mean, this is awesome. I really love the conversation and I really would love to see, uh, we see Shojin got kicked out and now I have to admit her because she was in the way. <laughs> I would like this conversation to keep going. Like, I mean, I don't want it. If we move online, I would like this to be kind of a monthly or bi-weekly meeting where we just meet for an hour and chat brainstorm uh, it, it's not that we have solutions or answers but maybe together we can come up with some positive uh positive solutions you know something that 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 is good for everybody or for some of us at least so that's that's my thought is to make it inclusive and it was meant to be more for graduate students uh i the graduate students did not show up, <laughs> apart from our graduate students, and I'm very happy that you guys are here. Uh, Sorry, Carolina. Hey, Dimi. Can I ask you something very quickly about technology? Yeah. Are you using um, any digital resources other than Zoom that you were not using before this? I honestly try to limit my digital resources. Just because we think that the students are so savvy, mm -hmm. but we ask them, when we ask them to work and actually do work with the technologies, they will find thousands of excuses not to do it. So my, my resources are Zoom, Canvas, and the, the website. I try, I really try, especially as far as making, may students even complain that they have to go to Canvas and Sentieri VHL. Because that's, the book has an online portion as well. Yeah, and that's too much for them. They mm -hmm. don't want, I don't think the students want high tech. Uh, they would love to see, you know, our textbook being like Duolingo. That's what I've heard. <laughs> wow. 
And yeah, no, I've heard that. I mean, I've heard, you know, because Duolingo can do it, why can't we? Like, <laughs> we are a university, and that's why we, we just operate differently. Carolina, I want, I'm going um, now, but I wanted to thank you from uh, Notre Dame side of things. I'm sure I speak for everybody, also those that had to leave. Uh, and absolutely, if we end up going online in the fall, which I am praying all the prayers we can possibly pray, Keep praying. Um, it is, it is, uh, I can't even imagine. But if we do, please let's um, do this again on a regular basis, even if it is just once a month and we can all gather and commiserate and share tips and whatever else we want to do. Because, <laughs> and maybe it could be an opportunity for students to meet our students with you, absolutely. Students. And if that, if we come to that, I think our graduates, today, we have a lot less, we don't have a big program like you do. Uh, we have a lot less, and I know that, you know, on Wednesdays, our last day of class, so we are uh, very much, um, they're working on their final papers and all that good stuff that you are very well know. So I, I'm not surprised I, they're not here. I would just like to chime in because actually our center is organizing an event that is organized by students to just um, for them to um, hang out in an informal way. Um, we're the first event will be, I think, May, I forgot, 11th. Actually, um, the format is we have one student to share a tip of their um, learning languages. That's for um, undergraduate, briefly. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, well, that's for all students, language students. Language. So it can be undergraduates or graduate students. And I think we're, we also want to be open to other students on campus uh, who are interested in learning languages, but not necessarily in, enrolled in a language course. So, so one of the purpose is also to promote um, the learning of foreign languages. Um, so our first event will be one of our lab assistant who is also a student, actually PPK student to share his tips of learning language. And then we will also share, we'll invite a guest who is an expert in the field to talk about a, a learning tip. Actually, the first one we invite is Carolina. Um, then we'll open up <laughs> to some open discussions among the students. They can just chat. Maybe we'll have some discussion questions. So we'll have a um, meeting very soon. I'll send out that message. And uh, oh, it, maybe Carolina, you can also forward that to Alicia. I think it will be fun to also open to other universities. Thank you. I appreciate yes. it. Sure. Yeah, I will. Yes, well, thank you. I, I mean, I really want to thank you, everybody, for participating and talking and sharing concerns. And uh, uh, I think it actually went really well. I'm really appreciating uh, graduate students and lecturers uh, from our program who decided to be the leaders and they were not scared and they were awesome and they did a wonderful job. and. I mean, you guys, I always say that, and but I'm going to say it now because it's important. If it was not for those people here, I, I don't know. I really don't know. But these graduate students and lecturers are awesome. So I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful to work with people that in, in five days organize an event and actually have fun and do awesome. So, grazie. Very yes. well done, you guys. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.